Hello. Did you know that some humans actually abandon their cats when they're expecting a human baby? People sometimes get rid of their cats when a new baby arrives due to fears and misconceptions about potential risks. But you need to know that with proper preparation and precautions, cats and babies can coexist safely and harmoniously. I am shooketh, but still, here are the main concerns that lead some to relinquish their cats. 1. Fear of aggression or scratching towards the baby. While any animal can potentially scratch or bite if mishandled or feeling threatened, cats are generally not aggressive towards babies if properly introduced and given space. Keeping the cat's nails trimmed and teaching children how to gently interact with cats can prevent accidental scratches. 2. Concerns about toxoplasmosis. This parasitic infection can potentially cause birth defects if a woman contracts it during pregnancy. However, the risks are low if basic hygiene practices like washing hands after changing litter and avoiding ingesting anything contaminated with cat feces are followed. 3. Allergies Some babies may develop allergies to cats, but this can often be managed by keeping the home very clean and potentially finding the cat a new home if the allergy is severe. 4. Lack of time or attention for the cat with a new baby, owners may worry they cannot give their cat enough care and attention anymore. Gradually adjusting the cat to the upcoming schedule slash routine changes before the baby arrives can help ease this transition. You know what I'm like. I, Coffee Cat, would only bring you the facts about this and I've actually mentioned these next things in a previous video. Rather than automatically relinquishing the cat, Experts recommend taking steps to properly introduce the cat to the new baby's smells, sounds and presence over time. Providing the cat with its own safe spaces, sticking to its routines as much as possible, and making positive associations can allow cats and babies to coexist peacefully in most cases. Getting rid of the cat should only be considered as an absolute last resort if all introductory efforts fail after giving the cat ample time to adjust. I find this dreadful, that people would still believe these myths, but there are still, unfortunately, several long-held, common myths, about cats and babies. Myth 1. Cats suck away a baby's breath or smother babies. This is one of the most widespread and bizarre myths, with no factual basis. Cats do not intentionally smother babies or steal their breath. However, it's still advisable not to leave cats unsupervised with newborns, as the cat may inadvertently smother the baby by sleeping too close to its face. Myth 2. Who? Cats can sense when a woman is pregnant. While cats may detect changes in scent or behavior during pregnancy, they do not have a sixth sense that alerts them to the pregnancy itself. Myth 3. Cats must be given away when a baby arrives. It is a myth that cats and babies cannot live together safely. With proper precautions like keeping the cat out of the crib and introducing them slowly, cats and babies can coexist harmoniously in most cases. Myth 4. Cats are jealous of babies and will harm them. Cats may initially be unsettled by the new arrival, but they do not become vengefully jealous. Gradually introducing the cat to the baby smells and sounds can help them adjust. Myth 5. Cats spread diseases and allergies to babies. While basic hygiene is important, cats do not inherently spread diseases to babies more than other pets. In fact, some studies suggest having pets can reduce allergy risks in children. The sources unanimously recommend taking precautions like trimming nails, supervising interactions, and slowly introducing the cat, rather than automatically relinquishing the cat when a baby arrives. From my research this next one is the main concern amongst pregnant humans. Toxoplasmosis To prevent toxoplasmosis when having a baby, you should take the following precautions. 1. 
Avoid changing the litter box yourself during pregnancy. Have someone else handle litter box duties, as the risk comes from accidental ingestion of sporulated oocysts from cat feces. If no one else can change it, wear disposable gloves and a face mask when scooping, and wash hands thoroughly after. 2. Keep cats indoors and do not allow them to hunt prey or be fed raw or undercooked meat, which can lead to infection and shedding of oocysts. Feed only cooked or commercial cat food. 3. Wear gloves when gardening or working with soil that may be contaminated with cat feces containing oocysts. Wash hands after contact with soil. 4. Cook all meat thoroughly to the recommended safe internal temperatures to kill any potential toxoplasma cysts. Avoid consuming raw or undercooked meat, unpasteurized dairy products, or unwashed fruits and vegetables. 5. Clean litter boxes daily, as oocysts require over 24 hours to become infectious. Use liners and periodically clean the box with boiling water to kill any oocysts. By following good hygiene practices, not allowing cats to hunt, and avoiding undercooked meat or contaminated food and water, the risk of contracting toxoplasmosis during pregnancy can be greatly minimized. Here's the one that bothers me the most, though, as a cat. So, I would like to talk about the horrible myth, that cats intentionally smother or kill babies by sucking away their breath. There is no credible evidence that cats maliciously smother babies. The sources unanimously agree this is an unfounded myth and old wives' tale. The myth likely arose from ancient superstitions portraying cats as evil or jealous creatures, as well as a few isolated and unsubstantiated reports from centuries ago that were likely misinterpreted. They're just superstitions. While cats could potentially accidentally suffocate a baby by sleeping too close to its face, experts agree cats do not intentionally harm babies this way. Cats are not motivated by jealousy or attracted to the smell of milk on a baby's breath. The sources explain that cats are generally afraid of babies and avoid them. Cats are not vengeful or spiteful by nature. Their behaviors are driven by simpler motivations rather than complex emotions like jealousy. Actual cases of cats smothering babies are extremely rare. Most alleged instances involve coincidences, like the cat being in the same room as a Sid's death, rather than being the cause. Basic precautions like supervising interactions, keeping cats out of cribs, and not allowing co-sleeping are recommended, but stem from an abundance of caution rather than a real threat of cats purposefully smothering babies. In summary, the search results conclusively dismiss the myth of cats smothering babies as an outdated and unsubstantiated superstition not supported by feline behavior or credible evidence. Please don't believe the myths and please use your intelligence and common sense. I hate that anyone believes we would hurt you or your baby on purpose. It's just not the way we cats think. We will love them too, if you give us a chance to show you. Lots of love, Coffee Cat.